What's up you guys? It is James from James Chef Tiles. I'm back with another video every day, every day making those videos, hustling, getting you guys that reptile content. I know I look forward to certain people's videos every day and there's some people that upload every other day and that just, when you want to see that stuff and you want, and you know they got content and you want to watch it, it's, it's struggle way the extra day. So I put out my content every single day. I hope some of you guys enjoy that. Um, Leave a like, comment, you know, subscribe if you do enjoy that. If you do want to see a new video every single day, it helps out the channel. It helps me. Um, it helps me get more animals from my collection. And hopefully get some cooler stuff to show you guys. So right off the bat, you'll notice this tank is now empty besides some fresh eco at the bottom. Uh, I took all the geckos out. I cleaned it. I scrubbed it. Before I put anything new in it, I'm going to give it another wipe down on the inside just to make sure. I Obviously, I know I missed the spots, but... I'm just gonna do it again. In here we still have Paradise. Uh, I'm actually gonna put the male, my male skipper in with her right now. And I do need to make some new tags for Tegan and Sarah. But right now, I need to mark Paradise as a female. So let's find the male in here. I put all the, the geckos that were in this enclosure down into this one. Just like that, there's my male. So, he's gonna go in here with Paradise, wherever she might be. Yeah, wherever she might be, she's in there. Oh, there she is. Yep. So basically the reason I'm doing this is she's about five grams shy of potential breeding size. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm kind of introducing her to the male for short periods of time. And I'm showing her, you know, the males can start coming around, start ovulating, start getting those feelings of, of, of wanting to breed and produce eggs. And by the time you're ready, a male will come back and they will breed and she'll understand what's going on. Hopefully she'll lay some eggs. Hopefully she lays them in the egg box. I did take some of the egg worth out. I'm not sure if it was enough. I'm kind of playing at face value where it looks small enough, but I don't know because I haven't really done it enough. I've done it with these guys. Um, I left a little bit more in theirs. We'll see how it goes. Uh, what else is new is that up there. Okay. Let me my step stool. Escape. So when you when you're using tubs like I am that don't have super secure clamped lids, uh, one thing you want to do is you might want to weigh it down. And I just stack my tubs and I put whatever's heavy on the top one. It's usually some kind of water bottle, some spray bottles or whatever. They do tend to leak a little bit, but the snake isn't new by any means. Well, it is new because I've only had it for a couple of weeks. This is Esmeralda, my female. Vietnamese blue beauty snake, blue beauty rat snake, and I'm try to get her out here. I know I literally made a video yesterday about how snakes are not bitey, and then I held her after that, and she was kind of bitey. She tried to bite me, so I'm trying to be careful with her. And with the power of editing, just like that, I have her out. Uh, so nothing's new with her. She's doing fine. You know, she ate Saturday just like I wanted her to, not off the tongs, unfortunately. Hopefully, we'll get her there soon where she has that nice, good feeding response. But I just want to take a look at her cage. Um, Vietnamese Blue Beauty rat snakes are large, not arboreal, but they do like to climb snakes. So what I did in her enclosure is I took a couple of the air holes and I stuck some plants in them. 
and it's just a little bit of foliage. It's just a little bit of foliage. Uh, it helps her feel secure, blocks out any light, um, and it gives her just a little bit of something to climb on. I don't know why she's being so bitey. But if you watched yesterday's video, she just bit me. I barely felt anything, and obviously it's not bleeding. Uh, but I really need to get her, if she's going to start biting like that, I need to get her tamed down before she gets any bigger. Uh, I don't want to take a bite from a snake any bigger than this. It's, it's not fun. It's not the end of the world, obviously, but it's not enjoyable. And I do want Esmeralda to be an animal I can take to expos and hold and let other people hold. Uh, it's she's such she's gonna end up being such a large beautiful snake that I just, just something I want to show off and if she's gonna be bitey it's gonna be really hard to do that so hopefully we can calm that down and get her to be less bitey I'm not sure why she's doing that but I gotta change her water line while I'm right here Okay, so other than that, uh, if you watched, not yesterday's, but the day before's video, you'll remember I talked about all my terrestrial geckos and I showed them off before I'm about to start cooling them. I'm giving them, you know, about two weeks to flush their systems and make sure there's no food left in them. If you cool them down while there's food left in them, you risk the food going bad and rotting inside their stomach. Now, when I did that, I actually forgot to show you a couple of geckos because they were in a tub that wasn't labeled. Uh, these are a trio of geckos that I bought off of my buddy Trent Gecko. You've seen a couple of videos with him. And he was really trying to get rid of them. He needed to make some room. He gave me a good price. I said, you know what? I'll take them. I can sell them. And I put them up for sale on Facebook for higher than what I bought them for. Trent doesn't really use Facebook. Benefit me. Um, and I had someone interested right away. You know, I waited. You know, he's like, can you wait a couple of days? I was like, it's fine. Uh, the day came, he's like, oh, can we push it back two days? I was like, okay, but you know, that's going to be it. And I didn't hear from him, so I posted it in a different Facebook group, and I got really no bites on it, so I might end up just keeping this trio. Uh, let me show you what it is, and I'll explain. So to start this off, we have the male right in here, and these aren't quite full-grown. Um, I'm going to brumate them because they're just going to be in my rack with all my other geckos, but I'm, they're not breeding size this year. So I might actually just sell them before next year because it'd be, I mean, it's hard to say. It's it's hard to justify keeping them for a whole year just to breed them when they're not, they're single, single gene animals. This is a male, obviously a male, Het Bell, Het Bell from a Steve Sykes line, uh, a pure line actually. And he shares the dad to the two females who are, clutch mates if I'm not mistaken now these two females now, now these two females are bell females from a pure bell line and 
a pure bell, Steve Sykes bloodline, and they don't have any tail kings. Now, what's exciting about that is I really hate tail kings. Um, there's a lot of controversy and talk about if they're genetic and if they actually like harm the animal in any kind of way. Let me put that to rest because I know a lot about leopard geckos and tail kings and I work with them every day. Tail kings are genetic. If you have a gecko with tail kings and you, if you breed a bunch of geckos with tail kings, odds are you're only going to get geckos with tail kings. If you breed without them, you're probably not going to get them unless they're mixed in that bloodline and you might get a couple. Um, tail kings are really bad because the tail is connected to the spine. So if you're starting to get tail kings, you're more likely going to run into back kinks. And back kinks are where you have to start euthanizing or selling animals as pets only. There's a dang fly in my living room interested in these geckos. Um, so it's all connected. I've seen it. There are a lot of people who say back kinks only happen when there's problems incubating. That's not the case most of the time. Yes, they can actually uh, occur quite often if there's trouble incubating. But a lot of it is genetic. If you look at, I think it's caramel ball pythons that get a lot of kinks. That's genetic. Caramel ball pythons have been inbred so much that they're, they have back kinks. And that's just something that keeps getting passed on. Hopefully, I can keep these guys pure. And what I'll end up doing if I do end up breeding them in a year is I will make all females, unless I have a male incubator, then I might make a couple males. Uh, I will keep the biggest, the healthiest, the nicest females back, probably like two to three. And then I'll end up selling the male and buying a new male. And what I'll probably end up buying is a snow bell so I can then produce 100% bells with 50% chance of snow instead of 50% chance het bell, 50% chance bell. And it's all just working up the ladder and what, what you can do at the time. And these projects take time. These projects take years and years to do and to understand. I'm lucky that I understand everything. You know, I've been taught very well with, you know, I've been shown papers and templates and all sorts of stuff that tells me exactly how everything works. And I've understood it well, so I know how it all works. Uh, hopefully, I can breed these guys I might end up just just selling just the male and just buying a new male so I can just skip that first year of waiting and produce some snow bells right away or possibly some white and yellow bells. If you have an opinion, let me know. White and yellow would be really nice, but it'd be more expensive than a snow bell. And I would probably get it through where I work just because I get a discount and it would be cheaper. All right, so today's video wasn't anything too spectacular, just a few updates and a few uh, checking on some animals. Um, I really hope you guys learned something and enjoyed some of the animals that I showed you. My name is James from James Jephthaus. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook is James Welter, jamesjephthaus at gmail.com. If you have any questions, if you need to get in contact with me, uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We are a really small channel and all that kind of helps us get the ball rolling. And as I produce more animals and I get nicer animals, hopefully it'll help us grow exponentially. So, nevertheless, I hope you guys enjoyed it and have a good one.